Good morning and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street in Peckville, Pennsylvania, and I am right here with you every Sunday at this time on this station to bring you, the landowner, the information that you need regarding natural gas development. At the Clark Law Firm, I focus on landowner, property owner, royalty owner representation. I have not, I do not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. I represent landowners for gas lease negotiations, gas lease reviews and consultations, breaches, claims against gas or pipeline companies. Did they break your agreement? Are they improperly paying you royalties? Are they improperly shutting in your well? Has your lease terminated and the company hasn't recognized its termination? Also, of course, pipeline agreements, pipeline, water line, surface site agreements, well pad agreements, meter sites, compressor stations, unitization issues, surface use, any and all issues related to gas, natural gas development in Pennsylvania, buying and selling gas rights, property involving transactions involving gas rights. You can give us a call, see if we can help you. Reviews and consultations before you sign. We can also do them after, but they tend to be more effective. Before you sign, give us a call and I can do a review and consultation. They're all done with me where you can certainly come into the office. You can send me your paperwork. We can do it over the telephone. But one service that has been so valuable in recent times that I talk about a lot is the review and consultation service where people say, well, you know, I think I want to do this. But before I sign these documents, I want to have someone who knows what they're doing, looking at the documents and advising me as to my options, my leverage to make sure I'm not missing anything. So I understand the document. Could I negotiate for more compensation? Could I negotiate for better addendum terms and protections to make this agreement stronger? And in pipeline agreements, my experience has been, I have a hard time finding an example in my mind where we were not able to, or I was not able to improve a pipeline right of way agreement that was presented to a person. Now, sometimes we can improve them drastically in compensation wise, sometimes by hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sometimes compensation is something we can't improve, but many times we can. So don't read too much into that. Many times we can improve compensation and many times that compensation improvement is significant. But in doing a review and consultation and evaluation, understanding your leverage, there are times where the company, and I stress that these are typically very limited cases where the company does have the right to put in the pipeline. And so your negotiation leverage is reduced, but, but, but there are typically still things that you can do to improve that agreement. But I want to again, stress that in the vast majority of pipeline agreements that I review and I do consultations with and we negotiate on, we are able to, I am able to improve that agreement and often it is a substantial improvement with many times it being additional money and many other times it being better language and frankly, usually we're able to see more money and better language added to the agreement. But we have to look at your individual case, look at your leverage, but the key of these reviews and consultations with respect to pipeline agreements is that you then learn what your rights are. You also learn what the company's rights are. Does the company have the absolute authority to put the line in the ground on your property if you do not sign the proposed documents. And many, I mean many times, that answer is no. And I've talked about this a lot. 
There are many ways that a land man can present something to you where you believe that, and maybe it's a misunderstanding, maybe it's intentional, I don't know, but I've talked to many landowners who believe that they have no choice, that they have to agree to the proposed pipeline easement and right-of-way on their property. However, we talk about it, explain what the company's rights are, and the people are pleased to learn that, in fact, the, they, if they do not sign the agreement, the company cannot put the pipeline on their property. On top of that, then, they may want to simply say, hey, thank you for the offer, but no thank you. I do not want to have a pipeline on my property for the next 100 plus years or more. They say, thank you, but no thank you. Or they may say, hey, instead of this measly $15 a foot that you're offering me for this pipeline, I can simply say no. It is not worth it to me to have a permanent easement on my title and on my property for potentially ever. That's not worth it to me at $15 per foot. That's not worth it to me. So if you want to put the pipeline on my property, I may agree, but instead of $15 a foot, I want $75 a foot. I want $100 a foot. I want $60 a foot. If you do not want the pipeline on your property and you have the ability to say no, you can simply say no and walk away, or you can say, well, I don't want to do this, but there's some price that I may want to do it at. And I've been involved in cases where that price is literally hundreds upon hundreds of dollars per foot. And in some cases, a thousand dollars per foot. And the company ends up agreeing to it because we understood our negotiation leverage. We understood the company's negotiation leverage, and we maximized the negotiation process to the benefit of the landowner. I have seen countless times where people were offered five, ten, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars for a pipeline agreement, and they ultimately later on signed an agreement for a hundred thousand dollars or more. That is not nearly as unusual as you may think. But then many people, when they were offered the pipeline agreement at $30,000, hurried up and signed and never found out that they had the right to negotiate, they had leverage because they had the right to say no, and they never explored those rights and maximized the negotiation process. And they signed an agreement for thirty or forty thousand, where they may very well may have gotten a hundred thousand dollars, and significantly improved the document. Any landowner who is presented with a pipeline right of way agreement should be getting, at bare minimum, a review and consultation with an attorney working for them. Not the landman working for the company trying to get your signature, but working for you to explain what your rights are, what your options are, what you can probably negotiate, what you may be able to negotiate, and fully understand the document you're presented and how it may be improved. You'll hear me say sometimes, by the way, you're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. But on pipeline agreements, I've done, I've worked on, consulted, negotiated, reviewed pipeline agreements, right? I've quit counting, but well over 50, I think well over 60, and I think we're close to, and I think we may be over 70. But let's just say this, a lot of of different companies in Pennsylvania. I have seen dozens and dozens and dozens of pipeline agreement forms that companies present to you, the landowner. I have negotiated, I don't know how many pipeline right-of-way agreements with all of these different companies, but I will say a lot. And so I have a very good idea what this company 
will agree to in this situation. What, if I don't know about this company, what other companies will agree to and have an idea of what is something reasonable that you can add to this. And in most cases, when my clients sign agreements that we, I negotiate, they're signing agreements that have pages and it's not quantity, it's quality, but we go for both. We want quality addendum terms, additional terms that we negotiate to be added to the agreement. Terms like one pipeline, one pipeline only. Terms like you cannot change the location of the route that we're agreeing to at this time. That this agreement will terminate triggered by a certain event or lack of activity and use of the pipeline. Those are just samples, but we add, I add in this negotiation process, typically pages of additional addendum terms that have value to you, the landowner. And sometimes the value is ultimately worth tens of thousands and even hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you have a pipeline right away agreement that you're being offered $100,000 for, and that agreement allows, allows for two pipelines. Well, if we can limit that agreement to say only one pipeline for $100,000, well, maybe if they put a second one in or they want to, they have to either get your permission and then you can renegotiate from scratch or they have to pay you the same compensation rate again. Or maybe they have to pay you 100000 this time. If they put a new pipeline in in the future, they have to pay 125000 maybe 150000 Everything is on the table. Reviews and consultations can be extremely valuable, and they are, I believe, because we can. I can tell you, here's the experiences with this company. Here's what they like to do. Here's what we can do. Here's what your leverage is. Here's what their issues are. And here's a plan as to how you may want to go forward. Whatever you decide, that's up to you. But think about the idea that you're approached for a pipeline agreement by one company. And that's your experience is being approached by a pipeline agreement with that one company. You've seen their form. There are many, many different forms of agreements out there. And when I say forms, I mean those first three pages, two, three, four pages they hand to you, that's their form agreement. If you are simply signing a form agreement presented by the company, in my opinion, you are making an unbelievable mistake. If you are then signing a form agreement with a few addendum terms that the company has offered you on their own, then typically you again are making a big mistake. The companies offer addendum terms in my experience, many that have no real bite or quality to them, but they want you as the landowner, my opinion, to think that you're getting some sort of benefit. Oh, hey, we're nice guys. We're going to give you this. We're going to give you that. We're going to give you this. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes these addendum that you're offered are not only toothless, have no bite, have no real authority, really give you no advantage. Sometimes, amazingly, they're literally bad for you, that they actually make the agreement first. And you think I'm kidding. Well, I'm, I'm sure you don't. But looking, here's one, a right away agreement, holding my hand, the addendum, one of the addendum terms. This is our opportunity to make this agreement better. This addendum term is entitled temporary water pipeline, and then in parentheses S, meaning multiple lines. And it says that in addition to the rights granted by the landowner to the company, you're giving them a perpetual easement, AKA, in other words, forever, easement to lay, install, construct, remove, and operate temporary above ground water pipelines as needed from time to time. So whenever they need them forever, they have this right within the right of way that's been granted. It goes on to state, quote, no additional consideration shall be due to the grantor, which is the landowner, 
by either the grantee, which is the company, or anyone that they assign these rights to. So, the addendum term presented to this landowner gives the company the unlimited right from time to time, so I guess it's not permanent, but to install in place temporary above ground water lines within the easement area. Imagine if you're a farmer and across your field now is a giant temporary water line which is ran above ground across the easement right through your field and it's crop season and you need to get out there and you need to either harvest, you need to plow, whatever it is that you need to do and you got this big pipeline, water line, above ground fire hose type line going right across your property. How are you going to cross it? How is it getting installed? What type of crop damages are you going to have? And this is a right which is forever. So they can frack one well, two wells, three wells, say in a neighboring pad. Some pads now are having 20 wells, 20 or more are planned from some wells. Each and every well can have its above ground pipeline placed on the property from time to time to time to time. That term is actually added as an addendum term presented to you. Do you think that you have an advantage from that? If you do, you shouldn't. And we need to stop this stuff. We need to stop, stop, stop landowners signing these bad agreements. Before you sign, get a review and consultation from either me or somebody who knows what they're doing. But before you sign, before you commit, get a review and consultation and then decide. Maybe you want to sign then, but get that review and consultation so you know your rights and you make the right decision for you and your family. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. You can give me a call, 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702. Learn about what we do, see if we can help you. Love to hear from you. And remember, we're just getting started. This is segment one. I'm gonna get into in a pipeline agreement and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to stay calm, but at the same time, my uh, physician just upped my blood pressure medication. So who knows where we'll go with this. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Remember, I represent landowners, only landowners, have not, do not, and will not represent gas or pipeline companies. If you are looking to learn more about reviews, consultations, gas lease, pipeline agreement negotiations, breaches, where a company has broke or breached your gas lease pipeline agreement, royalty issues, unitization issues, give us a call, Clark Law Firm, 570-307-0702. That's 570-307-0702. I'd really love to hear from you. We have clients. I have clients all across Pennsylvania and gas producing areas. So wherever you are, don't be afraid. Give us a call and see if we can help you. That's what we want to do. And I look forward to hearing from you because we know that there are a lot of people out there that need somebody working for them, not somebody working for the company. Okay, let's have some fun and talk about pipelines. And, you know, you think I say that in jest, but I tell you, I actually really like talking about pipelines because pipelines are an area, like I said in the first segment, that many times we can increase compensation, meaning the money you get. Many times that increases by tens of thousands of dollars. And quite frankly, many times that can get into the 100,000 plus range. However, we need to look at each case on an individual basis and assess what is your leverage? What are your options? What is your risk tolerance? Meaning how aggressively do you want to push this? Some people are willing to accept a lot of risk. And when I say risk, risk usually means you can ask for too much money and the pipeline does not get installed on your property. And many people think that's a very good thing. So it's not that risk, you're going to get in trouble. It's not risk, oh, I'm going to get sued. 
its risk of, okay, well, maybe you demanded so much that the company worked around you and was able to do that. All of that comes into this whole evaluation process and something that I do regularly in these reviews and consultations. And that's why typically it's an hour or two, usually about two hours with the pipelines because I need to look at everything. Then we get on the phone or we come, we have an in-person meeting, but the value of understanding your agreement, what you're asked to sign, the loopholes, the problems from somebody who deals with the back end problems as well, where person calls and says, Hey, they're putting a second pipeline in my easement area and they told me they were only going to put in one. Well, we look at the paperwork and the paperwork allows more than one line. So there's really, most cases, nothing we're going to be able to do about that. However, had we talked the first time before the person signed and we did a review and consultation, well, we would have identified there are two pipelines or unlimited allowed. And regardless of what is said to you verbally today, the company can come back in the future and install additional pipelines. And in many cases, if you just sign the form agreement, you're not even going to get any more money for that in many cases. Or maybe you get, if there are crops growing, maybe you get the payment of crops. You need to address these issues before you sign so you understand what may be allowed to occur in the future, regardless of what the person is saying to me. Maybe all of a sudden in the future, you're getting another line and you're getting a big valve site on your property. Valves that are connecting these lines, a pig launcher, a pig receiver, these above ground pipeline facilities on the property. You say, whoa, 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 whoa. They told me it was just going to be one pipeline underground. Well, the standard reply from the company side will be, well, that's what we planned at that time, but plans have changed. Now we need a second pipeline. Now we need something above ground. And you say, well, wait a second. That wasn't what I was told. The person who talked to me, who got me to sign this paperwork, told me the company was just going to install one pipeline and it was really going to benefit me because more gas was going to go to market. My gas was going to go to market. It was going to give the company more outlets to sell the gas. And therefore, it was really good for me. So I signed it thinking I would get one pipeline and it was going to be good for me. And signing for $15, they said, was the most they ever paid. So person signs. And then later on, here comes the second pipeline. Here comes an above ground surface structure. Maybe they're even going to fence it in. So now you have a fence in the easement area. Maybe that's in the middle of your field and the edge of your field, wherever it may be. But none of that you thought or contemplated when you signed the agreement because you were told, hey, we just want to put this one line here. It's going to be great for you. Here's my pen. Here's my pen. Oh, and by the way, I'm a notary. Here you go. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station and give us a call, 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702. So resetting, landowner signs the pipeline right-of-way agreement because they were told, hey, this is going to make you money, $15 is all we pay. Here you go. This is what other people have signed. Here you go. Here's my pen. I'm a notary. Then you find out in the future that there's all this additional activity occurring. And you say, wait a second, I didn't agree to that. And probably, most likely, the person who you signed a paperwork with is now gone and nowhere near to be found. And then the people say, well, you know, hey, look, you signed the agreement, which is the killer line. You signed the agreement. The agreement allows us to do such and such. Yes, but your guy told me that it was only going to be one line. It was going to be underground, that everything was going to be great, and I was going to become rich because of the gas. And the company says, well, regardless, I don't know what was said. I wasn't there, but this agreement says we can put multiple lines. We can put things above ground. Oh, and by the way, it also says that any verbal or oral statements or representations made, if they're not written in this document, they have no effect, that the entire agreement between you and the company is embodied or contained within the documents. In other words, 
you can't come in saying, well, you told me this, this guy or girl, this land man told me this, that's not going to work. The agreement's on the paper and the agreement says multiple lines, above ground facilities, access to and from the easement area, anywhere on your property. And you didn't negotiate anything. You didn't change anything. You just signed. And therefore we can use any of those rights that we want to use. And now we want to use those rights. And there's nothing, there's not going to be anything you're going to be able to do about it. But had you, for example, had a review and consultation, you would have understood what the rights were. And it's one of these things that the company says, we're only going to put one line in. We're only, and we're not going to put anything above ground. Just a quick example. Then, hey, no problem. Let's put that in. We'll document it in the addendum and we'll add it to the agreement that there can only be one line and nothing above ground. Well, if you push back as a company, then, well, what do you mean? You need to have those rights. You just told me time and time again, you only needed one pipeline, that you weren't going to put anything above ground. So if you're telling me that, then why don't you agree to it? And those are questions that need to be asked and they're questions that need to be answered. And you need to have those questions. You need to understand them. You need to identify them and you need to ask them before you sign. And that's one of the great things that reviews and consultations expose the loopholes, the leverage and negotiation position of each side to help you decide how you want to handle it. Sometimes we do reviews and consultations and the client says, hey, I don't want the pipeline. There's no amount of money that would, that would justify that for me. And so they simply tell the company no and move on when before that they thought that they were in a position they could not simply say no. Sometimes reviews and consultations, the person learns, hey, I can say no, um, but I, I would be interested, but I'm sure as heck not interested at $15 a foot. Give me $60 a foot. Now I'm more interested and we negotiate that way and either they do, I do, whatever we do going forward. And sometimes we get that $60 a foot, you know, many times, but you have to look at the individual circumstance. You have to look at the individual circumstance. The radio show is not meant as specific advice. The websites, not specific advice, but we have to get you specific advice and you do that again either give me a call learn about reviews consultations see if i can help you or call someone else that knows what they're doing call somebody but do not rely on the landman working for the company to tell you your negotiation leverage to educate you on the loopholes of the agreement the very agreement that they're presenting to you are they going to explain those loopholes I don't think so. We need to make sure that you understand them in your position. And we do it, I do it all the time. And I've never had a person once say, oh my heavens, what the heck did I just do that for? No, we leave that call or we leave that meeting with the person having a detailed understanding and knowledge about what they're presented, what their leverage is, where the strengths and weaknesses are in the agreement, and then that person is now informed and educated and knows their options and makes their own decision as to what to do. And look, most of the clients we represent are entering into agreements, but we're entering into better agreements, not just simply the form that's presented, not just simply the form it's presented. I will say, in my opinion, I'll say it strong. If you're signing a pipeline right of way agreement and the form that's presented to you, my opinion, I'd scream it from the mountaintops, you are making an enormous mistake. And if you don't want to call me, call someone who knows what they're doing, but find out why I say that. Why are you making a mistake? Well, because you can probably negotiate it to your benefit in almost every case that I've seen or been involved in. We need to make sure that you're doing that and not being taken advantage of. Too many people are being taken advantage of. We have to stop it. And you stop it by getting information and education to the people and not, not trusting and relying on the other side to educate you on the problems or negatives 
to the agreement they are asking you to sign. When we get back, I'm going to give an example and go through some terms in the agreement. And don't miss it. And I don't care where you're from, where you're at. I don't care if it's gas lease, pipeline, whatever it is. These are great examples to show how these agreements work and how companies operate. I'm going to get into a pipeline right away agreement when I get back. Stay tuned. You are listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am here each and every week at this time on this station. I've been doing All Things Marcellus for now. We're in our eighth year, eighth year of this radio show. So you can go to the website. It'll be up. Today's show will be up tomorrow, Monday morning on pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com, two websites. Go there, check them out, get information, become informed. pagasleaseattorney.com, pipelineattorney.com. Check out this show, prior radio shows. I'll be right back. Give us a call, reviews, consultations, any other services, 570-307-0702. 570-307-0702. I'll be right back. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Make sure you join me each and every week at this time on this station for All Things Marcellus. And remember, give us a call. Learn about what we do. See if we can help you. Reviews, consultations, oil and gas lease issues. Did the company breach your lease? Oh, by the way, are you held by shut-in and shut-in only for a series of years, especially Tioga County with Sweppy? Are you held by a vertical well that is capped and shut in and not producing? And has that been the case for several years? I really want to hear from you. 570-307-0702. You did not sign a gas lease for a company to drill a vertical well, hold five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred or more acres and not produce. That wasn't your deal, and we're looking to do something about it. 570-307-0702, especially Sweppy in Tioga County, and you know who you are out there. A hundred, last count, around 175 wells that Sweppy has in what's called regulatory inactive status. And in my opinion, that is wrong, and we need to try to do something about it, and I'm looking to do that. 570-307-0702. 0702. Give us a call and we can do some intake and see if we can maybe help you out. Look forward to hearing from you. So, okay, let's stay on my buddy Sweppy LP and I'm going to go through a pipeline right of way agreement, which is presented to a landowner in Tioga County. Now, again, this could be anywhere, but we're going to talk about this one today. So in pipeline right of way agreements, this is a pipeline right of way agreement. It's actually not an option agreement. It's a direct pipeline right of way agreement. Two different types of agreements, both critical, both you really need to understand. But this one in particular is just a straight right of way agreement. This one says, I'm going to paraphrase some, that you are granting this company, you are granting or giving these rights the right to operate a pipeline, and then parens S, which means multiple pipelines, for the collecting, gathering, and transporting of gas, liquids, water, water, also solids, solids, or mixtures thereof, along with the rights here and after described. So, a couple highlights. You're granting them multiple pipeline rights. You're allowing them to transport gas, liquids, water, and solids through these pipelines. We would want to limit that. Goes on. So other rights. You're giving them the right to lay, construct, install, operate, inspect, maintain, repair, replace, abandon, renew, substitute, Oh, here's a big one. Change the size of and remove a pipeline and associated appurtenances. Appurtenances, including, but not limited to. So this means all of these things and more. Communication cables. Remember, you think you're, let's pretend, you, let's, let's say that you're told, hey, we want to put a gas line in. 
Well, then why are you going to agree that they can also install communication cables, electric lines buried in the ditch with necessary manholes, splice points at or above ground level? Keep going. Whether or not the same may be incidental or necessary to or for such operations. So in other words, cables, electric lines, whether or not they are incidental or necessary for the operations that are occurring. Goes on, air patrol markers, risers, those are above ground pipeline facilities, pig markers, valves, above ground facility, corrosion control equipment. Then, you know, I said earlier about fencing off above ground facilities. This goes on along with the right to fence off same for the purposes of transporting gas, or I'm sorry, liquids, gases, solids, or mixtures thereof. Then it says whether originating in, on, or under these or foreign lands and said pipelines and appurtenances to be located on the land belonging to the Grand Tour. And in this case, they actually have a map. So let me highlight some things here. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station. And if you have a pipeline right-of-way agreement, we're going through a sample one here, you should be calling 570-307-0702. I'd encourage you to explore the at least review and consultation. And this is the type of stuff we're going to talk about in depth in your case. You are granting substantial rights here. Changing the size of the lines, above ground structures, allowing the company to fence above ground structures on your property. You're also allowing cables, electric lines, air patrol markers, valves, above ground structures. You're authorizing all of those. Now, thankfully, in this case, there's reference to a map. So, if you made the mistake and you agreed to an agreement like this, and now a company comes out after you've signed an agreement and they want to change that map, they want to change the map that you agreed to previously, that, ladies and gentlemen, may be the break that you've been looking for or you should be looking for. Meaning that when a company comes to ask you to sign a new map, that may be your opportunity to start this process again, to get a second bite of the apple, a more informed by I don't know if that's possible, more informed bite of the apple. And now you know you're not going to be taken advantage of again. You're going to be informed. And for people who haven't already signed, let's be informed today and not get taken advantage of. So remember this. If you've ever signed a pipeline right-of-way agreement and somebody comes to you to sign a map or initial a map, you know, hey, big deal. What's an initial? It can be a huge deal, and it probably is. Say, thank you, but no thank you. I'm going to take this to an attorney and just make sure that I don't make a mistake and I understand this. And we do a review consultation and explain, hey, look, this may be your second bite of the apple. Here's the reasons why. Or in rare cases, look, maybe it isn't. Here's what your options are. And here's how what you can, you know, here's your different options. And you can decide how do you want to do this. So keep that, uh, keep that in mind. If you, I don't care where you are. If, you, if you're asked to sign a new map or initial a new map, that you should be looking at as a potential opportunity. And don't do it without getting legal advice. You can call us, the Clark Law Firm, with me, Attorney Doug Clark. I do all the reviews and consultations personally, either in office or by telephone, 570-307-0702. Regardless of your location, 570-307-0702. So again, 
we I just went over the what's called the granting clause where you're granting these rights and they're pretty darn substantial. We just went through them above ground, multiple lines. Notice there is no limitation to the number of lines, no limitation at all to the number of lines. So this agreement goes on that they have the right at any time to lay, construct, install, operate, inspect, maintain, repair, replace, renew, substitute, change the size of and remove additional pipelines and appurtenances on the land. Appurtenances, you should be thinking about above ground facilities, fences, valves, meters, and so on and so on. Appurtenances is and should be a scary word for the landowner when you're dealing with pipelines. So it then goes on. In the next paragraph, it gives the company the right of ingress and egress. Essentially what that means is the right to travel to and, to and from the easement area across your property. Generally speaking, that's going to be an unlimited right. So this says the right of ingress and egress in, on, over, and through, across and through the land and, and any adjoining lands owned by you, the grantor. And listen to this then, for any and all purposes necessary and convenient, convenient to the exercise of the rights, rights of way and easements herein granted. All of this stuff should be limited and in almost all cases can be limited. But when you sign this, you are giving these extremely broad and not very limited rights. We need to stop these broad rights being granted because in virtually every case we can limit these. In virtually every case we can limit these. If you are not limiting the rights you're granting, in my opinion, you are making an enormous mistake and you may be missing out on substantial compensation, also known as money, for agreements that you're signing and you're signing these forms, which are extremely and in my opinion, inappropriately one-sided. We need to even these things up. We got one more segment to go. Stick with me. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I have not, I do not, and I will not represent gas or pipeline companies. I have clients that I've represented all across Pennsylvania, people with property in Pennsylvania located across the country. Give us a call. See if we can help you. 570-307-0702, regardless of your location of the property or size. See if we can help you. You'll get an honest assessment. If we think we can help you, we will try to do it. And I do all of these reviews and consultations myself. I look forward to hearing from you and hopefully we can help you out. 570-307-0702. Stay tuned. We've got one more segment to go. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark, right here each and every week at this time on this station. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. Join me each and every week at this time on this station and give us a call. Learn about reviews, consultations. If you're presented with any agreement or documentation to sign, give us a call. Learn about reviews, consultations, see if we can help you, 570-307-0702. Don't be afraid to call. I have clients all across the state, have clients with property in Pennsylvania located elsewhere across the country, can do the reviews, consultations by telephone or in office, same thing, other representation, have clients in Greene County, which is a southwestern corner, Washington, Fayette, all counties where we have gas production, we've probably represented someone there. So really encourage you, don't be afraid to reach out. 570-307-0702. If we're not right for you, not a problem. You just made it, you took the time to make a call. So check it out, 570-307-0702. So I get back to this pipeline right away agreement. And again, remind everybody, this is just an example. There are many different forms out there. This form, I went through some of the heart of it and especially the granting clause, meaning what are you granting the company? In this case with Sweppy LP, happens to be a Tioga County agreement, but you're granting again, multiple line rights, meaning more than one pipeline. And in this case, there are no limitations to 
the pipeline, the number of pipelines. So they get a 50 foot wide permanent easement, permanent right of way and easement across your property. And they can put in as many lines as they can fit within that easement area. Very important. Then, which you may not realize, you're also granting them without limitation on the number. You're granting them the right to install communication cables, electric lines, oh, and meters, valves, unlimited number. There's no limit on this. Above ground structures, the ability to fence these off, all of those things you are granting them. And now they may or may not use it, but they may, and you're granting those rights. Those rights should be limited. We want to start with one pipeline, one pipeline only. We want to narrow as much as we can the permanent easement and the temporary easement. We want to negotiate for as much money as we can get today, but then also if they need to do something in the future, you want to be able to say no or enter into a future negotiation. You sign this document. You've given them, given them unlimited number of lines, unlimited surface structures. They could put in unlimited cables and they could put in unlimited electric lines. Now, there's probably a limit of what they're going to need or use, but they have those rights. They also have the right to assign this agreement in whole or in part. What does that mean? That means that let's say they have the right to install these pipelines and now they want to allow another pipeline company to come in to install a pipeline. Or maybe that another company is going to install electric lines or cables. Maybe that's something that could be allowed through an assignment. You need to limit these things. You need to limit this. And, you know, what's the kicker of all, saving for the big grand finale, that the agreement calls for $1 up front, literally $1. Then, prior, here's the, this is verbatim, prior to the installation of the first pipeline, in and on and across the grantor being you, landowner's property, under the terms and conditions set forth in the pipeline right-of-way agreement, the grantee being the company shall pay the grantor a one-time payment of $7.50 per foot. $7.50 per foot. And you've given them all the rights that we've talked about. Now in this agreement, if they do install a second pipeline, you should get $7.50 and 50 cents per foot for that second line and so on. But I'm going to tell you in my belief, in my opinion, in my experience, that is nowhere near enough in my opinion. In Susquehanna County, for example, we do what's called well connects that just go right from a well off the property. And that usual bare minimum compensation is usually $30 would give or take, you know, right around that $30 per foot area. So you're talking about potentially hundreds and hundreds of feet and often potentially thousands of feet at $7.50. And I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, that is outrageous. That is outrageous. That's not what we see. And in my opinion, in my experience, that is not normal. That is not normal. Do not be convinced that that is normal. If it's what your other neighbors signed, it doesn't mean that that's what you need to sign for. $7.50 per foot, in my opinion, is totally outrageous, as is $10, and in many, most cases, so is $15. That's my opinion. Now, we'd have to talk about your case in more detail and what your rights are and what you can do, but these numbers are crazy low. So... And in my opinion, the reason why they're so low is because people aren't getting the good information they need. They're not understanding their rights, their leverage to negotiate, their ability to say no in most, in many cases, and they're just signing. And that's keeping that number down. If everybody tomorrow stopped signing and said, we're not going to sign unless you offer us an agreement of $50 per foot, 
the price you would find very quickly would change to $50 a foot. But because of their skill and ability to get out there and convince people, oh, you're going to be rich here, hurry up and sign, hurry up and sign, this is what your neighbor signed for, people sign, and I think they're making a very, very, very big mistake, and we need to stop that. We need to have people informed, and then if you want to sign, you can. But this agreement here that I talked about, we would change so much to this agreement and talk about what could be changed, and then you would decide what you want to do. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. You can call me, 570-307-0702, 570-307-0702. Learn about what we do. See if I can help you. I really want to do that. I really want to help you. we got to stop signing these bad agreements because we're not informed. If you get informed and you want to sign an agreement, then that's good. Go ahead and sign it. But get informed by somebody working for you who's giving you the information of value to you, not the information that the company wants you to have. And there's another thing I want to point out in this agreement. I talked earlier about option agreements. An option agreement is something, again, get assistance. Please, please, please get assistance. But it's saying we'll give you a certain amount of money up front today. And let's say we have two years in which to pay you another payment. And then if we do, now the actual pipeline agreement rights kick in and we can install a pipeline on the property. But we have to, what's called, exercise the option. So maybe we give you $1,000 and now we have two years to decide whether or not we're going to use the pipeline. And if we do use this pipeline and pipeline agreement, we'll pay you, let's pretend it is $50,000 at the time we decide to use it. Well, interestingly, this agreement, remember I said it doesn't say option agreement. It literally is entitled pipeline right of way agreement. And it says that for in consideration of $1 and other valuable consideration, you're entering into this agreement. Then I read to you again the payment documentation saying that prior to the uh, installation of the first pipeline that the company shall tender you or pay you a one-time payment of $7.50 per foot. It just kills me to even read that out loud. $7.50 a foot. Well, it doesn't say when they have to pay this it just well it says prior to commencement but that doesn't mean they pay what are the can they pay you a dollar now and wait 15 years and then use the agreement is that what you're agreeing to well it looks like you are you need to have limitations in this agreement you're signing an agreement from what i have of a dollar and giving this company the ability to wait years and then elect that they're going to use the agreement and then pay you $7.50. And if they don't even use the agreement, this thing could sit on your title for decades, forever, potentially. Now, I think there's probably problems with having an agreement that lasts forever, but this is a problem, and it's easily solved, and you have to solve it. You can't sign. You can, but you shouldn't be signing agreements like this. And this is one example, and it's a bad agreement in my opinion, but that's what most of these form agreements are. And again, that's okay because that's the company's agreement that they want you to sign. But we're smarter than that, and we know we've seen ourselves be taken advantage of, our neighbors and other people, and we're not going to do it. And we're going to get help. We're going to understand it. We're going to negotiate it. We're going to do reviews and consultations. We're going to maximize it. And that is what we need to do, and we got to do it. Start by giving us a call, 570-307-0702. Up against it, join me each and every week at this time on this station for all things Marcellus. And please remember, the landman works for the company, not you, the landowner. I, Doug Clark, have not, do not, and will not represent gas or pipeline companies. Have a great, great week, everyone.